All right, here we are with a new live stream for the new year, 2023. <laughs> Hard to believe. Every time I think of the new year, uh, no matter whether it was 2022 or 2023, it seems like we're speaking from the future. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and yet here we are live. Um, this is Speak Faith Live. I want to encourage you to take the time to... Uh, join us today and listen to uh, the broadcast. I'm getting a few things set up here. Uh, there we go. Sometimes hard to get everything coordinated, but we're getting it done. Uh, these live shows are a new experience for me. And so bear with me as we work our way through some of the uh, issues involved in live streaming and continuing to speak in a coherent manner <laughs> because there's a lot of technical stuff going on in the background that you can't see but that I have to deal with. I've got a, the lower third going here so that you can see the announcements so that we don't have to uh, go through tediously go through all the announcements every time. I do want to highlight a couple of things. If you haven't subscribed to speakfaith.tv via Roku or via Fire TV, go ahead and do that. And then also, it would help a tremendous amount if you would subscribe to our Rumble channel. I've mentioned that before in past live programs. Uh, we're trying to build up that Rumble channel because if YouTube ever does, this is our YouTube subscription coming up on the lower third now, uh, which we do want you to subscribe to that as long as it's there. But at some point, I suspect YouTube is going to restrict Christian programming, and Rumble has promised that they will not. So uh, I encourage you to subscribe to our Rumble channel, rumble.com slash speakfaith. You do that for me, I would greatly appreciate it. There are other ways you could help us here at Word of Faith Ministries, and that is uh, to uh, subscribe, as I mentioned. Subscribe to Rumble, as I mentioned. But also just get the word out. Let people know that we're here. Let people know about speakfaith.tv. I know I talk about it all the time. I post about it all the time. It is the main outreach of Word of Faith Ministries. We are a multimedia ministry. And, get my tongue working. Uh, and it is our primary source of outreach. And we are now just within shouting distance of a hundred thousand viewers hallelujah so great things are happening uh where are we at right now let's let me take a look real quick at, oh, this is up to the moment literally live we'll look at the analytics ninety five thousand six hundred and forty eight viewers of speak faith tv and uh, of that, 181 <clears throat> viewers just today so far. That is that is exciting. I don't know about you, but I mean, you know, if you had a church building with 181 people in it, that's a pretty good sized church these days for a word church. Uh, but we've got 181 folks watching on the live stream, or not on the live stream, on the live TV channel. Uh, of speakfaith.tv. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. Um, let me show you something really kind of neat here. We have different cameras set up for different views of us here in the studio. And uh, that has been made possible by folks helping us uh, financially, and I appreciate that. If you would like to contribute financially, to Speak Faith, the ministry, Word of Faith Ministries, you could do that at paypal.me slash speakfaith. paypal.me slash speakfaith. You can find more about that at our uh, website. And uh, let me go ahead and put that up there. Speak Faith is speak.faith. You can get to us that way on the web. And you can find out all kinds of information about our uh, ministry and our programming. Okay? So trust that is 
something that uh, will be a blessing to you. Now let's get into some of the things that I've been sharing on the radio program and things I want to share with you today. We've been talking on the radio program about prepare the doing of it. And really, it's along the lines of uh, these New Year's resolutions everybody's talking about. Everybody's making New Year's resolutions. Going to lose weight. Going to change this. Going to do that. And a lot of people have a hard time actually following through with New Year's resolutions. Hey, I'm one, okay? I'll stick my hand out. Uh, it, it sometimes can be hard to follow through. Well, Paul talks about, to the Corinthian church in 2 Corinthians chapter 8, um, he talks about an issue that he had to deal with where the church there in Corinth had committed to his ministry financially, but they weren't following through. It had been a year. A year had gone by since they said they were going to co contribute to his ministry, and they didn't follow through with it, didn't actually do it. So he says, in, uh, let's see, let me back up just a couple of scriptures here. Verse 10, Herein I give my advice, for this is expedient for you, who have begun before not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. A year ago, they committed they were going to contribute to his ministry. Verse 11, this is our where our theme scripture comes from. Now, therefore, perform the doing of it. I love that. Perform the doing of it. As there was a readiness to will, so there may be a performance also out of that which you have. In other words, what you have to give, go ahead and give that. Now, I'm not saying that to take a, an offering up here on uh, the program today. That's not what it's about. I'm talking about a situation where somebody had a desire to give, had a desire to bless the ministry, this church, but they hadn't actually done it. They hadn't taken up the offering. They hadn't sent the offering. And so Paul was saying, guys, you said you were going to do this. Now perform the doing of it. Well, that idea, that core idea of perform the doing of it, is really the key to this whole resolution thing. A lot of people make it resolutions, but if you don't perform the doing of it, if you don't follow through, then you're going to be frustrated, just as Paul here was a little bit frustrated. Now, he said very plainly in Scripture that it's not that he desired the gift, but he desired fruit abound to their account. He was more concerned that they receive the blessing that was theirs because of doing what they promised to do. You know, it's one thing to make a promise to have good intentions, but it's another thing to actually follow through. And it's the same thing if you're trying to lose weight, you're trying to change something else. You're not, I, hey, I tell you one that I'll stick my hand up about. Every year I say, this year I'm going to start an actual Bible reading plan. Now, that's not to say I don't read the Bible throughout the year, obviously. I'm not constantly studying and preparing for messages and everything else. But I've always wanted to do a through the year, every day, read a particular portion of Scripture plan. And I just don't get around to it because it's just like we just started 2023, January 1st. Well, today is January the 5th. Now, I don't know about you, but you know what it feels like to me? It feels like it's still the 1st. <laughs> <laughs> Here it is five days later, and it's just like every day, every day, every day becomes like another hour is what it feels like. And, you know, I'm probably not the only one that feels that. I'm probably not the only one that experiences that. Time seems to be being compressed. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I like what I heard recently about time... Looking at it this way, when you're young and you have a whole pie and you cut it into four slices, they're big slices. But as time goes by, for those of us that have a little gray in the beard, <laughs> as time goes by, you slice thinner and thinner. You know what I'm saying? And so you have a whole lot of slices as time goes by, but the slices keep getting thinner. 
and it just seems like every year gets thinner. <laughs> and so it just time flies by. Well, if you've got a plan, if you've got a desire, you've got to perform the doing of it. You've got to make a determination. What Brother Kenneth Copeland calls a quality decision. A quality decision is a decision that you make that you will not turn from and you will not renounce. You are committed to that decision. And it's obvious that this Corinthian church, though they were willing, though they wanted to give to Paul and his ministry, wanted to support him, they just weren't performing the doing of it. And like I say, I'm not talking about the financial side of this. I'm talking about the performance side of this. The fact that they need to do what they've committed to do. And it's the same thing with us. We all have goals. We all have desires. Now, I will share with you one of my personal goals. Uh, you know, obviously, I need to lose weight, obviously. And I'm working on that. Not as much as I'd like to be, but I am. Uh, however, there's another area. And that is, I want to be 100, 120 <laughs> percent, I know that's not real, 100 uh, percent totally out of debt. That's a goal I've had for a long time. Now, I'm not saying you have to be 100 percent completely out of debt to be blessed. Obviously, you get blessed in order to get out of debt, Okay. But the scripture does say the bar is servant to the lender, and I don't want to be servant to anybody but the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. And so over the past few years, I've been pushing and working and planning and working to get out of debt. And we are so close. We're just so close. But that's a personal goal for me. My personal goal for 2023 is to get 100% out of debt. That means no debt on a car, no debt on a house, no debt on a credit card, no debt anywhere. Okay? I mean, I when if, if you ask me, what do you owe, Dr. Bill? Nothing except to love other folks. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just like the scripture says. Now, that doesn't happen overnight. That doesn't fall on you like ripe apples off a tree. You have to plan. You have to work. You have to commit to that as a goal. Now, again, let me make this clear. I am not saying you've got to do it too. Okay? This is something I'm committing for us to do, me and my wife, to do, is to get totally out of debt. We're both in agreement on it. We both confess the word about it. We both tithe and give, because Luke 6.38 says, Give, and it shall be given to you, pressed down, shaken down, the running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? Well, praise the Lord. You don't give until you've given beyond the tithe. The tithe belongs to the Lord. And so a lot of people say, well, I give my 10%, so I'm a giver. No, you're a tither. Praise the Lord. You're obedient. Hallelujah but you're not giving yet. Amen? Now, my dad, bless his heart, hallelujah, he's gone home to be with the Lord. Uh, many years ago now, back in 83, he went home to be with the Lord. But my dad taught me growing up exactly what tithing was all about. He illustrated it for the whole church. He got up and taught one Sunday morning, and he took silver dollars, which are big, easy to see from a distance. And he stacked up 10 silver dollars. And he said, the only thing the Lord requires is to take that top one, and that's the Lord's. And the rest of that stack, that's yours. And I'm telling you what, as a kid, that illustration just stuck with me. And he would say, giving doesn't occur until you have tithe. Or if you give beyond the tithe, that's your giving. So, I mean, I grew up hearing that. I grew up knowing that. And then when I heard Brother Copeland talking about it later, same thing, saying exactly the same stuff that my dad taught me. And my dad 
Praise the Lord, was Southern Baptist, Southern Baptist. <laughs> and I grew up Southern Baptist on a Southern Baptist orphanage. And so we heard about being born again. We heard about tithing. We heard about a holy life. We heard about all kinds of good things from the Scripture. Now, we didn't hear anything about baptism of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues. We didn't hear anything about divine healing. But we heard about the basics of the teaching of the Word of God concerning salvation and so forth. So tithing was an area that I heard taught. Like I said, my whole young Baptist life. And it is scriptural. Doesn't matter what folks say about, oh, you know, isn't that not really scriptural? Yes, it is. Okay? Want to argue with somebody? You go argue with the Lord. Take one of these Bibles back here that's right behind my head and check it out. You know, don't argue with me. I'm not going to argue with you. It is unfruitful to argue over Scripture when it comes to something that is as well established and founded in the Word of God as tithing. Okay? I mean, the book of Malachi chapter 3 alone, where God says, you guys have robbed me, and you say, wherein have we robbed you? In tithes and offerings. Well, I don't know about you, but I don't think I'm going to get ahead financially robbing God. Amen? Oh, yeah, but Dr. Bill, that's Old Testament. It's New Testament, too. The Bible says very specifically, here, men give tithes to men, to, in this case, the ministry, and Jesus takes that tithe and ministers it in heaven. So, that's New Testament. And Jesus himself talked about tithing. So anyway, don't want to get into a teaching on tithing. That's just a side topic. But the point is, tithing is biblical. Giving is beyond the tithe. So once you give, Luke 6, 38, then men shall give unto your bosom. And notice it doesn't come falling down out of heaven from the sky. Men give unto your bosom. Various things will happen. I've had financial miracles happen. I've had favor with God. I've had... When I was at work in a secular job, I've had a uh, financial blessing and increase of my salary come in such large numbers, I was frankly embarrassed over it. <laughs> I mean, the last major increase I got, somebody's going to shake your head over this, but the, mass, the last major increase I got, it was a series of events and a series of things, and they studied people's salaries across the state to see what uh, system engineers ought to be making and all this kind of stuff. I got an increase of over $20,000. That's just the increase. And I kind of went, gulp. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I mean, favor. Surrounded by favor. My way paved with favor. Amen. Why? Because just happened that was going to happen. No, because I believed for favor. I've got a teaching. I'm going to pull an Andrew Womack here. i got a teaching on my website, speak.faith. Go check it out. It's in the message archives. Look for the audio message archives over on the left-hand column. And there's a message there called, Shields Up, the Favor of God. Shields Up. We've got to believe for favor. Favor is available to us, but we got to believe for it. we got to stand on the Word of God for favor. And so I'm not casual about favor. I believe for it. I stand on the Word for it. Favor is for me and mine. Hallelujah. And I believe for favor for me, for my wife Belinda, for my son Ben, our whole family, hallelujah, is walking in favor. Every time we turn around, somebody's showing us favor. Every time we turn around, there's some kind of new great deal. You say, really, Dr. Bill? That's my confession. And because I confess that, it happens. So a lot of what I've been 
planning on, working toward, resolving to do resolutions. I've been working the plan. Planning the work. Working the plan. Performing the doing of it. You've got to, for instance, let me give you an example. If your goal is to get out of debt, and you have a surprising chunk of money come in, don't go out and spend it on some dumb toy. Take that money and pay a debt off. And the next time, you pay another debt off. And the next time, you pay another debt off. Oh, that's no fun, Dr. Bill. Hey, that's how you do it. You perform the doing of it. You actually apply yourself to do the goal that you set for. Now, comes to eating. If you committed to eat less, eat less. <laughs> Don't eat. Don't stuff your face if you try to lose weight. Common sense. Your goal is to get more physical exercise. You got to get outside the building. You got to walk. You got to do whatever's necessary to perform the doing of it. Amen. But guess what? It's not going to happen automatically. You, 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 <laughs> pointing to myself, are going to have to make a decision to do it and then get up and do it. You can make a decision to get out of debt. You're going to have to work on getting out of debt. Take that first credit card, cut it up, Pay that one off. Maybe it's the least of all of them, the least you owe. Pay that one off first. Then you move on to the next one. Move on to the next one. Listen, if you want help in this, go check out Dave Ramsey. I love listening to Brother Dave Ramsey. He fusses at me all the time. <laughs> and I take it in stride and say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. You right. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. <laughs> and that's that's the thing we need to do is be disciplined and perform the doing of it. I keep saying that, but that's the phrase the Lord's got me saying. That's the phrase he's got me on right now on the radio, is we've got to perform what we've committed to do. Now, in the case of these guys in Corinth that would, had committed to give in the Paul's ministry, they needed to get around to actually take it up the offered and given. And once they did that, they were blessed. They were relieved because they had promised they were going to do it over a year. And then they also were able to receive blessing from it. Paul gave them the example of the Macedonian church that gave above and beyond their natural ability to give. They committed to do it and they did it. And he said of that church, listen, he said of that church in Philippi that he was talking about in the, in the region of Macedonia, he told them, my God shall supply all your need, Philippian church, because you have been givers, you have been tithers, you have been givers, you have done beyond even your natural ability to give. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, here's the thing. Had they not tithed, had they not given, had they not been obedient to do what God had instructed them to do, they wouldn't be one of those that he was talking to. You see what I'm saying? You have to perform it. You have to do it in order for it to change your life. Amen. There's a whole lot of folk, listen, there's a whole lot of folk that won't have committed to, that won't to be born again, that have never prayed the prayer to be born again. Perform the doing of it. Say, Father, I come to you right now. I confess to you that I am a sinner. Jesus took my sin. He became sin for me. And I received that sacrifice. I believe that God raised him from the dead, and I can make him Lord of my life. According to Romans 10, 8, 9, and 10. So therefore now, Father, I am saved. Amen. Simple. But you got to perform the doing of it. you got to actually pray the prayer. Same thing with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. 
<clears throat> oh, Dr. Bill, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost, speak another tongue. Well, pray the prayer to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Pray to the Father and say, Father, I know it's a gift given for me. I receive it now, and by faith I open my mouth and begin to speak in other tongues. And you start speaking in other tongues, and guess what? You've performed the doing of it. Now, I'm not saying that you're performing in the sense of earning your salvation, earning the baptism of the Holy Ghost, earning financial blessing, earning healing. No, 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 no. It's all a free gift. But it is contingent upon you acting on it and performing your part, which is to pray and to believe and to receive. I'm telling you folks, it is so simple. You got to have help to misunderstand this. Amen. And I'm telling you, you've got to do what God's called you to do in all these areas. A lot of you that have resolutions. Those resolutions are just words until you do what God's called you to do. Amen. A lot of you have situations in life that God has spoken to you. He's told you, take care of this. Do this different. Take care of that issue. Walk in this area. Obey him. Obey. Little four-letter word. O-B-E-Y. Obey him. Woo, hallelujah. It will be a blessing. Now, we're just about out of time. I'm going to stop right here. But I tell you what, you need to perform the doing of these things. That's the only way that these resolutions are going to help you. If you're just talking to the wall, <laughs> making promises that you don't intend to keep, then resolutions are a joke. A lot of people make a fun of the idea of resolutions. But if you actually perform the doing of it, a year from now, you could be in a totally different place. I plan, in short order, to be 100 completely, totally out of debt. 100% out of debt. And I've only got just a tiny amount left. I mean a tiny amount, an embarrassingly tiny amount. But I'm getting rid of that, and I will be totally and completely out of debt. And that's one of my biggest resolutions for this year. Goals for this year. Amen? Well, I'll tell you what, we'll stop right here. Join us again next time. And remember until then to fulfill the Word of God.